What's up guys, Mike Coco back here bringing you guys an explore guide on floors 4-1 up to 4-10 and I'm also going to be sharing strategies for floor 3 and possibly floor 5 because I haven't actually made it through enough of floor 5 to tell you exactly how it works yet. Um, but I'm going to be providing suggestions for floors 3 as well. So a lot of the things that I say for floors 4 or for floor 4 applies to floor 3-1 to 3-10. So the first rule of thumb when it comes to explore is you want to kill them ASAP. Um, any strategies that involve, you know, slowing or wearing the boss down, you know, delaying using shield or using attack debuffs to receive less damage periodically over time, or even things like um, aggro drawing skills such as, you know, Arena Summon or like Adriel's uh, Golem. Those typically don't work that well because the boss gets stronger over turns and so it'll deal more and more damage over time. So essentially you want to kill them as quickly as possible in like less than 5 turns generally. So with that in mind, we're gonna probably keep our formation limited to mostly ranged heroes or magic heroes that deal a lot of damage. Now personally, I prefer ranged heroes because... As far as I can tell, uh, some of the bosses in floors 4-1 to 4-10 don't have ridiculously high defense. So you'll still hit moderately high, um, even if you're using ranged heroes that don't you know, convert into magic damage. So that's fine for that. And so in Explore, in, at least in floor 4-1 to 4-10, there are a variety of bosses. Some of them are single target, so they only hit one target. And some of them are multi-target, so they hit the entire board. And depending on what kind of attack the boss uses, you can switch out your formation um, because the type of boss actually determines what Fury Thief you want to use. So before I get into it, I'm going to talk about the formations and the kind of recommended setup you want. Um, this is the setup that I found works for me. It is a single target Fury Thief, a damage dealer, a crit buffer, a healer and dispeller and you have one more hero of your choice so the reason why this works well is because in explore you're always or you're very often um starved for fury uh especially if you're fighting a boss that is single target damage only so in that sense you pretty much always want a single target fury thief at least for the bosses that are, deal damage to only a single character and for free players, there's not much choice aside from Khalid. Now, Khalid, you have to rank him up, otherwise he dies really easily. So just keep that in mind. You might have to, you know, retry, like withdraw and then retry. Um, because Khalid is just super weak at low ranks. And that's pretty much the purpose of the single target Fury Thief. Now, when you go to bosses that are 3x3, three three, you can kind of... Um, move away from the single target Fury Thieves uh, and switch to a multi-target, but you s might find yourself lacking a bit of Fury sometimes. So if you do find yourself um, uh, starved for Fury, I would switch back to a single target Fury Thief for the 3x3 three three, uh, bosses. Now, like I said before, the main focus is that you want to finish the boss as quickly as possible. So we're going to have a crit buffer and a damage dealer. The crit buffer, remember that crit deals two times damage and Basically, having a crit just means you're doing two times damage. Why not? So just bring that with you. It doesn't have to be Pram. It can be someone like King Pharos or even Neff. I personally prefer King Pharos because um, he provides an attack debuff. Uh, however, if you have a Pram with a costume, the magic costume, or Neff with a magic costume, that also works very well. Now, the main focus is going to be on one hero, which is your strongest damage dealer. Typically, this will be, for free players at least, it'll be Lacita, maybe Dark Avenger Sarah, and possibly Cromwell um, if his myth skill is maxed. The reason why I say Cromwell is because his myth skill provides, I believe, a 25% or is it? I think it goes up to 35%, somewhere around there, of attack buff. So in, in essence, his attack buff actually raises from, you know, the 50% from his own skill and then plus another 35% from his myth skill, which brings it close to around Lacita's level of attack up. And uh, despite the fact it's only for a limited amount of turns, like I said before, you want to finish it as soon as possible. So if you're running into turns where your uh, attack buff is uh, gone, 
it means you're gonna die anyway so you don't have to worry about the fact that it's limited by you know x number of turns so those are the three heroes i think would work well uh for explorer kokomo might also work well but his mid skill is kind of poor in comparison to cromwell um for now his costume might change that but for now i would say the top three candidates for your damage healers would be cromwell or the Sita, dark avenger sayor and then cromwell in that order so that's the pa that purpose excuse me of Lacita, and you want to make sure she's well geared you know give her the best gear you can get pretty much um i'm running full myth six on her with a extremely high um inscripted gun and that's pretty much the purpose of your damage healer now your healer and slash dispeller is kind of tricky for free players uh if you didn't pick up party ione you're kind of out of luck because then you're limited to either jury or arena now in this mode i actually prefer arena because once the summon is out the summon actually doesn't draw that much aggro because your damage dealer is going to be drawing all the aggro so once the summon's out arena can freely use any active proc on her book and so before uh i got ione what I was doing was I was using a book with a 3x3 dispel. You can pick those up in tower. Um, just, just have to farm for it for a while. Um, but that proc is not guaranteed. So it's kind of you know RNG. So I would still recommend getting Ione. If you don't have Ione, then I would go with Arena. And then Jury probably last. Because uh, on in Floor 4 specifically, uh, there are no attack buffs for the boss so you don't have to dispel any bosses so jury skill is simply just a heal it doesn't do anything else however floor 5-1 is an attack buff so you do have to keep that in mind you might want to bring in jury for that and the last hero is pretty much up to your choice now i'm using another fury thief because claire a deals pretty decent damage because she's magic damage she's also a ranged hero um, her mid skill also provides her with fury in the beginning so I can already have my buffs up before the second turn and she steals a decent amount of fury for a multi-target she steals the most actually uh, for all the multi-target fury thieves um, and that's pretty much it you can replace Claire with someone like Cromwell to increase to further increase the amount of attack and I think that would actually work better in that case because Generally, your single target Fury Thief can cover around 500 Fury, so that's quite a lot in combination with the um, the Fury gain from getting hit or you hitting them. Because Lacita is around 200 Fury, Pram is 200, uh, Ione is 222, so that's like 600, Khalid is 700. So it kind of adds up decently. So that's the formation I would recommend. Um, I would not go with any tanking uh, heroes, so don't bring in someone like Lucas or uh, pretty much most of the sword heroes, spear spear heroes, and any of the axe heroes. They don't work that well simply because they don't deal enough damage to clear it enough or fast enough. So that's the general recommended formation, and this also applies to floor three. Um, I believe floor three also has a bunch of like. Uh, controlling effects i think the balam the dog i think he also like stuns and the last boss silences and uh on specifically in floor three um there are some heroes that specifically target the front line so in that case you might want to switch out your front line to a few tanking heroes uh i know when i was having trouble with floor three um if I had like Lacita in the front, they would always get targeted. And I noticed that, I think it was like Cruel or something. He only, the only possible attack range was the front line. So if you replace them with like a tank such as Lucas, um, it actually works well. But those are the only few rare occasions where I would switch off to a tanking hero. So I'm going to auto battle through floor uh, 4 and probably commentate over what's happening. So... In general, you want your damage dealers to go first because if they have any bit of fury left, you always want them to attempt to uh, clear the boss or whatever. Um, so, for instance, if the boss had, let's say, you know, uh, 20 million fury or HP left and you had uh, only 200 fury left, you would want your damage dealer to go first because 
uh, if she goes first, then your the boss is dead, and you can move on to the next round. So that's generally why you want your damage dealer to be, uh, I guess, the highest initiative. So as you saw there, that wasn't a clean run. Uh, Ione got stunned, and even though she has a very, I would recommend giving her a very high active uh, ring. So if that means switching off to like a legendary like 80 or 90 ring, that's totally fine. Um, I'm currently using I think a level 90 ring, and so uh, she, the ring should proc most of the time. I think it's like level nine or something. So you can see that the crit buff allows Lucia to do crazy amounts of damage and actually I didn't see that I think that was only like 5 mil but she can hit easily up to 30 mil um, but like I said you need a high active inscription and so um, in Explorer actually I believe you will need lots of rune essence uh, my pram is currently running rank 6 gear but it's all at level 15 uh, Lacida is also running at level 15 myth gear um, those are generally it because they're sitting in the front line. Um, and rank 6 gear actually provides a decent amount of defense and HP, so you can actually use them as like tanking heroes, um, and it'll still work fine. So I haven't been keeping track of the numbers that were hit, but um, you, in general, uh, you want to aim for clearing the boss within roughly five to six turns. Um, six is kind of pushing it. Uh, oftentimes at six you might get killed, so it's not that recommended. So now you can see that the way I placed my formation, it always allows the Sita to be um, dispelled. Doesn't matter where Ione casts her uh, spell or dispel, um, she always gets unstunned, which is very important because Pram skill lasts for two turns, so I don't really care if she's stunned for one turn. But Asida's attack buff, did I say Asida's? Lacida's attack buff disappears after a turn, so you always want her to be maintaining her attack buff. As a result, she has to always use her skill, so that's kind of the point. Now, in, in floor four, in on floor four, can't speak. Uh, there is a certain type of mob. It's like this uh, worm thing. It's quite annoying because it deals like a it's like a suicide bomb worm, and it deals like a crazy amount of damage. It can potentially KO, uh, like one hit kill one of your heroes on the front line. So if that happens, just retreat and just restart it again. Um, it depends on how often they use it. Sometimes they just use a normal attack, which deals very little damage. But sometimes they just decide to you know go crazy and just like kill themselves and deal a huge amount of damage. And in Explore, actually, you can see that if you want uh, all of your heroes to be dispelled, it's actually beneficial if uh, your heroes don't have um, heal inscriptions. Because let's say, let's see, because the way Ione's heal works is that it's uh, heal based first and then dispel. So if you have one hero that has super low HP but very far away from the other heroes, and then you have a group of stunned heroes. Ione will heal first. It will prioritize healing over unstunning. So, uh, if you keep your frontline heroes uh, with low HP, then Ione's AI will naturally trigger and uh, want to heal the uh, heroes that have low HP. And you can kind of abuse this, and there you can see Khalid dies because he's uh, low ranked. But you can abuse um, Ione's AI to kind of force. Um, the heal in a central target. This is the one problem that Ione has that Remy doesn't have, but in Explore it's kind of better because you can target every or not Explore in Mythic Raid, you can target anywhere. It's kind of different in Explore because you don't really get the opportunity to you know um, move heroes so or select because everything's auto. So that's what you kind of had to abuse. So on this floor, four seven. Um, he, well, the boss actually switches to a, or not switches, the boss naturally uses a 3x3. Three three. So you can tell that you can actually gain a lot of fury. I'm already capped and they're still like hitting my heroes. Um, 
So in this case, you can actually switch out Khalid for another damage dealer. For example, someone like Prince Arthur, I think, works very well because um, he's 200 Fury, but his skill lasts three turns, and he normal attacks. And if he procs on normal attacks, he gains more Fury, uh, a maximum of 50 per target. So if he procs early, where none of the mobs are dead, you can rack up a lot of Fury that way. And even without it, um, Prince Arthur deals... The, the damage to Fury ratio is very good for him. So you can definitely try that for this floor. Um, and any of the successive floors that have, you know, AoE bosses. Now, I believe the next one is this worm thing. Yeah, so, or it's actually a rat, I think. It's a messed up rat insect. So for this boss, uh, when I initially had problems with this boss, uh, I switched off and I moved the position of Lacita and Pram. Now, this is because this boss works similar to Floor 3, uh, Floor three's Cruel, I think. He can only target the frontline heroes. So the way if you find yourself or if you find your damage dealers um, dying because they're in the front line, what you can do is you can move them behind and put like uh, tanking heroes in front of them. So the boss will only target the front heroes because even though, so let's say Lacido was here and so let's say Lacido was in the position of Ione and Lucas was in the position of Lacida. Even though the boss wants to hit Lacita because Lacita is drawing the most aggro, it can't physically act like reach her. So it will actually hit Lucas. And because Lucas is a decent tank, especially with the shield, um, your Lacita won't die. And at the very worst situation, you'll lose Lucas. Which is not a terrible thing um, because Lucas is kind of expendable. Right, getting a little bit of lag, but hopefully that's just uh, minor. So this strategy is kind of risky because it relies on the fact that you have to have a damage dealer and they have to survive all the time. Um, but I find that it actually works the best because I've actually been able to use this strategy and get to successfully clear 4-10, um, albeit with a secondary team to deal a little bit more damage, and get into four, floor 5-1. Uh, and um, for floor 4-10 and pretty much anything that ends in 10, uh, what I would recommend is to have a secondary team um, and have like a kind of expendable secondary team and use that team uh, to shave off a few bars of damage from the boss and then go in with your primary team and then destroy the boss. Because if you send in your primary team first and they die, you can use your second, and then you use your secondary team to shave off the damage you no longer have your primary team for the next floor. While if you use your secondary team to shave off the damage first and then use your primary team to um, finish the boss, your primary team is still alive and you can use it for the next floor. Um, it's kind of, you can kind of think about it, you don't really need me to tell you that, but it's just something if you haven't uh, noticed, you can do that for sure. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, rune essence is extremely important, and because you need to get your inscriptions to very high level, uh, Pram's cannon is I think plus fifteen somewhere above that. Claire's is also plus fifteen, and Lacita is like plus twenty. And uh, you definitely want to at least get them to plus fifteen because after fifteen, um, the inscription levels don't drop. Uh, the equipment simply just breaks. So. Right there, you can see that the stupid worms destroy the Sita. So in that case, I'm going to retreat. And I know for a fact that 4-10 uh, is not clearable by my primary team itself. So I'm going to send in my secondary team and hopefully the primary team can clean up after. So this is the secondary team. It involves using Arena, which was the uh, strategy I mentioned before. And it's pretty much a tanking team. Uh, not too much is happening. I could replace one of them with uh, the main hero because the main hero is no longer terrible So I'll probably just do that And actually, you know what I'll do it like this because remember crit deals extra damage So this team will shave off roughly I think 40 mil 50 mil if we're lucky um, And I think my primary team can take care of the rest
Yeah, so you can see right there, PA's proc, um, it actually gained back a little bit of Fury, uh, even though he used Fury for his own skill, uh, kind of brought it back. And so right now you can see the entire front line is stunned, so if Arena successfully procs, and she doesn't, of course, because RNG never works. Um, but if she successfully uh, procs, then the entire front line, or it, un it dispels in a 3x3, three three, so uh, hopefully it procs. Uh, still does not proc. See, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, the book is actually at level 10, and uh, normal gear, I believe, it doesn't, like, the guaranteed proc is at, like, level 15, I think. Uh, so, it won't proc until quite a bit sometime. Hopefully, I can actually survive. It doesn't look like I'm doing too well. And in the... Something else I want to note is that in the 3x3 three three, uh, bosses, you can actually use a shield for a while because... Um, the 3x3 three three just gains so much fury, so it is possible, but I still wouldn't recommend it because it's quite risky that you'll run out of fury. So it looks like we're probably going to hit around 50 mil, which is not terrible. I'm hoping my main team can uh, deal with that. And you can see right now that the shield does in fact allow you to survive a few more turns, but if you think about it, um, you're surviving a few more turns, but you don't have access to any of your skills because you don't have enough Fury to use it. Um, so that's why I don't think having a shield works that well. Uh, it may be useful for, for uh, Floor 5. That's a ton, tongue twister. Uh, even worse with Floor 4, 4. You know, that's like crazy. But uh, that's pretty much why I typically don't use shield is because at the end... Yes, they do survive, but they either run out of Fury, or they don't have the correct heroes to buff them, or uh, the important ones already died, so it's just not worth having them survive a few extra turns. So, I'm going to run it with my primary team. I don't think it will go too well, because uh, Khalid is going to die pretty easily, I think. Uh, which is going to be a problem, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, I've done this before. It took maybe two or three tries so hopefully we get lucky this time and it'll work I don't have to rerun it all right so there kind of got lucky so now Ione got uh, unstunned because of the proc so it's really important that uh, you give her the um, immunity ring because it doesn't matter if you give her a rank 5 ring and oh she gains like 10% or 50% more attack. Her attack is, to be honest, not that great. Uh, she can't attack with a skill. Her normal attack is simply just a normal attack or a proc. And so um, it's much more important if you can give her a immunity ring and then she can unstun everyone around her. Because everyone around here deal, deals far more damage than she ever will. So that's kind of... My reasoning why I gave her um, that kind of ring. Alright, so hopefully we can survive. It might. We might be able to do it. I'm not sure. It depends on how much damage Lucida does. This next turn, I think Lucida might die because she... Oh, my Ioni did not heal for some reason. Oh. Hmm, that's strange actually. 3 by 3 bosses, I noticed that sometimes they don't deal as much damage as I expect like during the last turn because that was on turn 6 or turn 5 and usually a single target hitter would probably kill them so there you go for floors 4-1 to 4-10 cleared um, primary team is still survived because I sent in the secondary team and you can tackle the first boss this first boss has an attack up and it's and it also silences your hero so I haven't found a good way to deal with that yet because I just made it this week um, and I don't. I think free players are actually severely limited in floor five, um, unless you play like a super like amount of time and just grind a lot of uh, materials and heroes. Otherwise, I think most free players are kind of capped at floor five because four ten is actually really difficult. The last boss has three hundred million HP, and uh, even with like a super strong Lucida, it still requires a secondary team to handle that. So. Yeah, you, like I, if you look at the scoreboards, you can see that um, not everyone's clearing 5-10, so it is quite difficult. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to show you guys the gear in case you need to see it, but 
it's pretty much just level 15 gear more or less um the gun like the weapon itself is very important you can either uh, increase the inscription on the gun or the ring um the the era like the tower rings actually provide more attack compared to their respective uh, uh legendary rings so that's the reason why i'm using it on the Sita. um so yeah that's pretty much it uh prime is also mostly like 15 or 18 uh not everything has been maxed yet but you can see that like her hp and defense is not bad at, with rank 6 it's 130 and 80 which is not that far away from lucas albeit lucas is running level 10 rank 6 but it's only like what 15k less hp and 10k less defense so it's it's pretty good um rank 6 is pretty good and you may have to consider switching uh Lucida to rank 6 because uh she's quite fragile as you can see, there's only like 60k defense, so it's worth a shot. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the exploration guide for floor 4 1 to 4 10. Uh, if you have specific requests for floor 3, I might be able to cover it. It's just that I don't remember how I did uh, floor 3, like how I went through it, so it might be a problem. But that's pretty much it, guys. Peace.